Welcome back to Calculus 3. In this part, we are going to work on section 4.1, functions of two variables. Well, function of two variables, well, you can look at <laughs> these cases. Okay, uh, square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. This is the function of two variables. In general, well, in all the previous discussions, mostly we have a function of single variable, y equals f of x, y equals f of t, those things. And now, instead of one variable, we are having two variables. That is a function of two variables. And also, in general, when we have a function of two variables, the total number of variables, that's a three. So really, it is the situation in the three-dimensional space. And also, in general, whenever you have a function of three variables, function of two variables, the graph, it is a surface. So this is what I said uh, in the, well, my notes. When you have a function of two variables, in general, it represents a surface in a three-dimensional space. How about uh, let's take a quick look at the first one. g of x and y equals square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. In the beginning, it might be harder to figure out how the graph would look like. But anyway, if you know the square root, and we'd like to remove that square root first. So simply make the writing a little easier. Uh, I say this is z. z is the square root. When I square both sides, I figure it out, and then by taking those two negative terms to the uh, left, I figured out that this equation looks quite familiar, right? That's the equation of Sophia. That's the equation of Sophia. And also note, because the function it is defined as a square root, so this z must be positive or at least zero. So in general, I'm saying the graph of this function, it is the upper half of the sphere. And uh, this is the graph I just copied from the textbook. It's the upper half of sphere. The next one, it might look a little more complicated, and there are different ways to approach this type of graph. What I want to tell you here is that it is a periploid. It basically, you can consider, well, along the, well, consider maybe y equals zero, so z equals x squared. In that case, we are going to have a parabola around the z-axis. Or maybe you can set x equals zero, then z equals y squared. We have another parabola centered around z-axis. And then you rotate the parabolas all around the z-axis. And then you are having a surface. The surface, it is called a paraboloid. It is formed by parabolas. It is formed by parabolas. Okay. And also, how about uh, let's look at uh, one relative simple case. What would happen if we have a linear function? Remember, we could have a linear function in a two-dimensional space. That's a graph. That's used for a straight line. And also, we could have a linear function in a three-dimensional space. As long as x or y, we don't have x squared, y squared, those kind of things. Not the square root, not anywhere in the denominator. So in either it is linear. And if you remember, we did cover this type of situation before. Uh, the graph must be a surface. And in either because it's linear, it turns out to be a plane. And it is a plane passing through the x-intercept, y-intercept, and z intercept and also i believe i have i have not a perfect drawing here i hope it shows some idea okay this is just a plane this is just a plane a linear equation in the three-dimensional space it is just a plane it is just a plane okay and also the other thing was to mention remember how we make arrangement for the three-dimensional space Again, I want to remind you here is do not change the order or the orientation of x, y, and z. Basically, they will have to be arranged in the counterclockwise direction, like x, y, z. Or if you know it precisely, it's determined by the so-called right-hand rule. Right-hand rule, okay. So, 
we are talking we are talking about a function of uh, really we are really working on a function of two variables and uh, we will get to the situation when we have function of three variables or even more but anyway for now let's just focus on function of two variables how about uh, let's take a break uh, in the next part we will continue with uh, the so-called level curves and the counter map thank you for watching